This is my old food forest. And uh, I haven't been here in three years since I left and decided to become a worthless expat, shiftless, nation hopping travel blogger. No, I'm just kidding. I, um, I'm not shiftless. This, uh, this whole area here, this is the food forest and uh, it, it is, there's like, there's nothing gone from this thing except bits and pieces that decided they were going to die or they got too much in the way. But there are, the fruit trees are here, there are berries, there are roots and herbs and natives and wildflowers and all kinds of amazing things that are here. So I came up here and I'm helping my friend who owns the place to do a little bit of chopping and dropping and cleaning up and figuring out what's what because I actually planted so many things I don't even remember what I put in here. So it's it's been sort of uh, food forest archaeology. But the exciting thing is is that nine years old, maybe ten years old, this food forest is ridiculously productive with fruit. We are, pi we are picking the most amazing citrus and wandering around. The mulberries are just loaded. The pears, the persimmons, these things are all coming in. And I wanted to take you through and show you a tour of what my food forest looks like now. All right, we'll start here. This is Piper Aratum, which somebody told me was a bit invasive. And I was like, nah. Well, apparently it waited until I turned my back and left and uh, it's moving around now. It smells like root beer. Really cool plant. This is a tangerine, very nice tangerine. My dwarf mulberry isn't a dwarf anymore. Simpson stopper. Peach right here. Hidden in here, there are all kinds of little gems. This is a longleaf pine that was planted in here. Got my fig up front here. Now you can see the remnants of grafts I made three years ago for my get grafting demonstration. Look at that. Took. This one did not take. And then here, you can see that is a wedge graft that I made right there. Texas Everbearing on top of this, which I think is a Celeste for the base. Check that out. As you come through here, there's Chaya. This is a very good, improved mulberry selection. Come around. There are blackberries back here that planted themselves. There's some palmetto that planted itself. Some in here, you see this tree was actually knocked down. This is a uh, Christmas palm right here, which is actually a little bit out of its range, but it's been mild lately, so it hasn't died. A lot of weeds just move in and they make it a forest. All you gotta do to make this system all tighten up again is go through and chop and drop, prune things way back, get out the stuff that's kind of in the way and just kind of hack some pads through and let the, let the weeds fill in the space. I'll show you something while I'm back here. Dioscoria alata. Those are the bull bills from one of the absolute best root crops you can grow in Florida. Maybe the best. Got a native bay right here. This was here when I was here. Died back a little bit and came back. A lot of these, these towering ones here, in front of me here, I have the cassava. And then back here I've got Tithonia diversifolia, the tree marigold, Mexican sunflower. Got a banana here, 
and a little microclimate. We've got a blackberry coming up right there. Right here we have the Miowa kumquat. This needs to be cleaned up and opened up. There's oak pieces falling over it. Take a look at these guys. These are really good. These are a very sweet citrus, highly productive. They hang on the tree for a long time. You can eat them skin and all. They're like eating a little bite of sweet marmalade. Fantastic. As we come through here, it does. Ah, we just gotta get a close up again. So, I have an autumn olive right here, which is a nitrogen fixer. It also makes an edible fruit. And you can make ketchup out of the fruit. One of my figs here. Look at this big, beautiful fig. I said all this stuff just needs to be cut and dropped a little bit. If I had a weekend, I could uh, really put paths through here again and do some serious work. And we're actually doing some clearing and cutting and helping out right now. There are so many blooms on this autumn olive. The thing's gonna produce like crazy. I have plants in here that I can't even remember what they are. <laughs> Pears. This is a uh, honey locust, which was cut down from the top because it was getting big and took it down and fixed it. And a pear back here that died. Back there is Pindo palm. And then up above here, this is another dwarf mulberry. You can keep this type small. It just needs uh, to be pruned every once in a while, and and she's still going to do that. It'll be pruned back. These right here are really good Japanese persimmon, which probably most of you know. This is the Fuyu persimmon. Just waking up. This is spring. It's been a nice wet and warm winter, which is great for food forests, uh, especially in our marginal between temperate and tropical climate. This is a uh, Confederate rose that I planted there a while ago come around here look at this I planted this bottle brush tree to bring the bees in and the hummingbirds like it too but the honeybees come in you just work those blooms wasps come in and work it but I, I put it in here amidst all of the fruit trees on purpose look at those bees working I put it in here because if the bees are over here sipping nectar they're getting used to being in the yard and they're gonna be around my fruit, which is what I want. And I saw this bottle brush tree at a nursery and it was loaded with bees and I said, that's what I want. I'm gonna plant that thing. Right here we've got another, this is a uh, pear right here. This pear has some grafts on it and I'm not sure which varieties I grafted on it anymore. Probably did, oh yeah, I named it. Look at that graft. This is the mosswood pear. This needs to be taken off because it's restricting the growth, but this was a an old pear that somebody found. It's sticky right there, just stay. This is an old pear variety that somebody gave me a piece of and I just tacked it on in the spring and it's growing, so part of that tree is something else. Look at this cactus right here. This makes an edible fruit. I'm not sure what the species is. Got this crazy grass right here. I can't even remember what it is. St. Christopher lily. Another beautiful fig. This is the velvet bean, Yukuna prurians, variety utilis. And this is uh, naturalized in the yard because I haven't, it hasn't been replanted in a long time. It just starts, and starts itself and it grows. And it's a testosterone booster. This is another dwarf mulberry. <laughs> look at that thing, it's awesome. And look at how many fruit are on it. Fruit, fruit, fruit. And as we come around here, it's a native plum, which hasn't leafed out yet. And then here, this is a fruit cocktail tree. Uh, right here, this is a very good key lime quat. 
And then there is a Meyer lemon, which is a very nice sweet lemon. I just switched the microphone because we were getting some wind noise, so now I have the shotgun mic pointed towards me. So if it sounds different, that's what it is. We're very professional in this channel. That's the Key Lime Quat, and right alongside it, that is the Meyer lemon, which is a very good sweet lemon. I don't remember what this is. <laughs> I planted so much stuff. There are blueberries in here. The dogwood died. There's an olive right there in the middle, which is looking really good. This is its pollinator over here, another olive. Then we have an edible prickly pear right there, an opuntia. Another beautiful fig. And then up front here, because this was dry and hot and drained well, I have a pomegranate. So that's my kind of my Mediterranean garden right there. The figs, pomegranates, and olives. I'll come over to this side, my goodness. So there's a nitrogen fixing tree right here. This is Enterolobium corticiculum. Probably said that wrong. This is an excellent nitrogen fixer, but it needs to be cut back. It's kind of taken over the system. We've got some beautiful blooms in here. I planted all kinds of flowers to bring in life and to fix nitrogen. And just to give the uh, predator some place to live and the insects something to eat. Because the more the stuff that's in the system, the more resilient it becomes. This is a Simpson Stopper, a native edible berry. I really like that one. And here, this is one of my original mulberries. This thing is all grown up. It's full size. Look at this here. This is a variety of hibiscus. Very cool. Look at this guy. Isn't that gorgeous? I don't have that variety anymore. I can't even get through here. <laughs> Let's cut underneath the mulberry. If you're really short, you can sit at this bench. Another Simpson stopper in the middle there. There's a lot of stuff that needs to, just needs to be chopped and dropped. And that's what you have to do when you have low quality sand or soil that needs some help. You plant a whole bunch of stuff so you get a ton of biomass and every time you chop it down and let it rot, you feed the ground. You're, you're doing what the forest does. So this may look like a terrible weedy mess right now, but a weekend's work with a couple of guys and you have dropped a ton of biomass, which then composts down and feeds everything. So this stuff is going to be, everything's going to be greener and crazier later in the year, but a lot of stuff is in dormancy right now. I've got some different lilies here. This is coral bean, nitrogen fixing, Florida native. Really like those. I stuck some crazy stuff in here, I don't even remember. That's a spiky thing. There's a philodendron I planted back here to see if it could live here. I was doing some experiments with tropical stuff. Seedling, loquat there. This is a tropical avocado I put over here to see if it could survive. Surviving so far. This is a gumi berry, an Eliagnus. I've got an orange here, which she said produced amazing oranges, but it's not doing it this year. Pyracantha hedge, which you can actually graft loquats onto, apparently, but it's an experiment I never got to do. This is the flowering almond, they call it, or almond verbena. It's got different names. Very nice for your insects. Let's go around here, past the old tree fort, high tree fort. I miss you. This is another orange. It's also looking really good. This side of the yard I never did much with. I never actually got around to it. Every time I planted something over here it would die and the weeds would grow again. This is the worst part of the sand. It's interesting because on the same property there are patches of 
really good soil and patches of really bad soil. This is the bad area. Even despite that, this uh, orange tree here is looking really good. Look at those blooms. <sighs> oh man. I miss the incredible productivity of this system. I just like want to come up here for a week and do nothing but work on it. I wonder if she'll sell me the house. Nope, not gonna do it, nope. <laughs> this is another Eliagnus, autumn olive or a gumi berry. Got another citrus here. I don't remember which one it is, but it's great that it's still here and it's happy. This is another Enterolobium. Going up here, you can see it's pretty much dormant right now. Back here, I have a native pawpaw I planted quite a while ago. This is one of our short ones. I think this one is uh, Asamina parviflora, which has edible fruit on it. That is not the pawpaw of the tropics, obviously. Different pawpaw. Sweet gums are just taking over, they want to make this into a forest again. You just have to direct the forest the way you want it to go. Right here, it's a tongue oil tree. I planted because it reminded me of my grandpa, who was a boat builder, and he liked tongue oil. And so I planted a tongue oil tree. And it is blooming, and I always wanted to see it bloom. Look at that. And now I can see it bloom. Right here underneath the tongue oil tree is the, I think it's called climbing aster. It's a really good insect plant. Very prolific, it's all through here. This loquat tree, the top of it has died back. It seems to have a disease. There's some sugar cane growing here, wild. <laughs> Years ago I planted that, it just keeps going. Right here, I have another Enterolobium, but back here I have to show you something because this is crazy. Past this beautiful mulberry, this isn't it. I'll show you this first. Look at these. This is a long mulberry. I had quite a collection of mulberries in here. Look at those. <laughs> I think that's actually the white one too. Makes a white mulberry non-staining. Right here. This, I'm pretty certain, yes, it is. This is Delonyx regia, which is way out of its range. This is the poinciana tree, also known as the flamboyant tree. I planted it here as an experiment in this little microclimate to see if I could get it to bloom and live. And obviously, it's doing well. It hasn't bloomed yet but it might be coming, that's pretty cool. We've got yet another mulberry variety here. Tell I can't get enough of mulberries. And then, right here we've got a loquat, which I grafted. Let's see if I can find the graft. There we are. Grafted it. I demonstrated how to graft it. And it's grown together so well. So it's an improved type. The whole top of it's an improved type. It should fruit soon. We've got my old, this was my old yam trellis. The yams are still here. Dioscoria alata. This is the flowering chaya. There's the, this is the better variety for butterflies and it's not as good for eating. Here is the Pineapple guava, Suriname cherry, Tropic Beauty peach. This is an excellent, excellent melting flesh peach. There's so many things in here. Like I keep I keep recognizing plants and go, oh yeah, look at that. Forgot about that. Pindo palm. That is a fruiting palm. It's very good. This is a Kalamondon tree. This is the one we used to use to make whiskey sours. Very, very sour 
tangerine-like shaped fruit. It's really great. Look at that thing go. I mean, I'm not even touching on a lot of the stuff in here. I've lost track. This is edible as well, the edible Opuntia. This is a dwarf pomegranate. I started from seed. <laughs> it's awesome. From seed. There's my other orange tree. A little powder puff tree. Nitrogen fixer, but it's also pretty. And it brings in the insects. These great oranges. Right here, this is interesting. This is a graft I performed four years, five years ago. And the bottom of this, the bottom of this thing is Chickasaw plum. Top of it is an improved plum, which is very productive, very sweet. The, the rootstock is this weedy, local, you know, native tree that is just not uh, not worth eating sometimes. It depends on the one you get. Sometimes you get some good ones, but these were not very good. This is what the leaves of it look like. That's the native. That is the improved plum. See the difference? So I grafted onto it, and uh, in order to support it, I rammed that bar through there because uh, it just wouldn't stand up. It was more vigorous over the graft than below. Getting blooms again on this thing. Look, it's got fruit hanging on the tree. I got blooms at the same time. Just so many things here. So you could see, even see the the lady that owns it ended up not being able to come to the property quite a bit because she had to take care of a family member who was ill. And so for the last three years, this system has been partially tended. She's added some new things. She took a few things out that were in the way or were causing trouble. But for an untended, or half untended, half wild system, you can see it's very resilient. There's a lot of fruit in here, just everywhere. Look at all these loquats. You can't eat the amount of fruit coming out of this place. Pomegranate. Not to mention the probably hundred yams that are buried here that have naturalized and gone wild. Look at this nectarine. This is why I plant food forests. I can walk away and come back and see incredible things happening. There's just so much food in here. It looks like a jungle. It's my favorite. Look at these blooms. It's another plum. <laughs> this is funny. This, this is a graft I did. So this section here is different than the rest of the trees naked. This part is already growing fruit. Different, different chill hours on the same. <laughs> so, there we go. Just wanted to show you guys what was going on here. A nine year old food forest system, still with tons of food coming out of it. And in the backyard, there's more citrus. There's like six more citrus trees. We've got oranges and grapefruits and kumquats. Let's see. I'll show you something here. Look at these. We just picked a few. Look at the beautiful color. Just a few. From all that's back here where my old plant nursery was. Way back there there's a row of citrus. <laughs> so thanks for joining me guys. I want you to think about doing this in your own yard. And remember that you can keep it as well tended or as crazy as you like. But if you look at all this biomass, in a very short period of time, you go through here with a machete, a couple of friends with loppers, whatever you're gonna do. You go through here and you start chopping. You're gonna drop a ton of biomass on the ground, get it under control in a few days, and feed the soil through the entire year because there's so much life in it. This is so much better than planting a few fruit trees in the middle of a lawn. This is a very living, active, breathing, honest to goodness, ecosystem that has grown up with hundreds of species. I'm just, I'm just amazed coming back and looking at it a few years later. 
the things have gotten so big, so productive, so beautiful, and you can cut it down, drop a lot of it to the ground, drop the stuff around the fruit trees you want to feed, get those fungi in there, get the worms happy, and you build a forest floor. And you have a very healthy system. And it can look very nice and clean, like a little woodland, or it can look insane. Different times of the year, for me, my systems look, you know, like both. So, <laughs> even here, she deliberately leaves these flowers. This is the Biden's Alba, which is a native weed, and it feeds the bees. Bees are always working it. Pretty cool, huh? Anyhow. Check out my book, Create Your Own Florida Food Forest, if you're inter interested in some uh, inspiration along this. And you can find more on the website, too. But even with me walking away, it's still growing. Trees are awesome. If I walked away from a vegetable garden, what do you think would be left? Nothing. Catch you guys next time. And until then, may your thumbs always be green. <laughs>